Oh, baby, and we are back, everybody. Welcome back to Words with Wayman. I am your host, as always, Matt Wayman. Support us online at Words with Wayman on Twitter, Words with Wayman on Facebook. We're going to jump right into it. Part two with uh, with musical comedian and spicy daddy, Jay Gillespie. <laughs> <laughs> musical comedian anytime somebody i was like, gonna say uh, denver comic but that would have been fine anytime yeah. <laughs> i'm going on stage they're like uh, do you want me to say anything i'm like all i want you to say is nothing <laughs> about music all right if you would do that for me nothing clutches Don't. up an audience they hate it that is yeah that is i mean there is a connotation i think against musical comedy a l- on a lot of times and i feel it too there's yeah. very little that i dislike <laughs> more than most musical than comedy. shitty musical comedy and it's strange that i find myself working in such murky water because some of it is just very hack very hack now some of it's great you know yeah, I was, at, it was at high plains last year with karen kilgrav i did not see uh, that and it was amazing and yeah I was so i was actually going into that show i was so excited i'm like there's a there's a musical oh, comedy I did see act that. oh my god they were so good they were amazing and yeah and be, and because it wasn't formulaic and that's yeah. my problem is so much musical comedy is formulaic. You rhyme sock with cock and a song about masturbation. And yeah. you're like, I get it. Yeah, and you like see it's that rhyme easy. coming. A to you're A. like, I was sitting beside my bed. There was a sock from all the time I've spent with my... And, and then like, it goes God, to something Jesus completely Christ. different. Yeah, and so it has to be the, yeah, the, it, the, mis- the masking. Yeah of the actual joke and so the whole thing just uh, uh, but like i said some of it's great some of it's great and some i was so thrilled to be on that show uh-huh. with people that are actually doing it uh and doing it well because there is a history of it i mean it goes back to the smothers brothers it's been something that's been done so good for such a long time but i feel like you're right there still is this connotation of it being kind of old school or yeah, and especially at a at a at a mic or local show I yeah mean, if, if, if you're at the top of of some amazing bill yeah you're like this is great musical comedy but when you're bringing me up you know 16th <laughs> at an open, <laughs> open mic, mic in portland Goodness. don't be like the next guy's doing some funny songs He's for doing us some zizzle, some whistle zizzles. <laughs> uh, and, and and then it's just me running up there with an acoustic guitar yeah like, <laughs> huh who wants to hear a g chord uh, huh gee this, you guys are a good crowd i'm gonna do a big joke about tuning and oh this is, god and it's awful and so, so um you've been kind of doing a little thing you've just been on the road a lot lately right i've been traveling as, as much as i can both for comedy and just to see the country so you'll like work for a while and save up some cash and then just tour around exactly Mm -hmm. uh and uh you know six months ago i you know got rid of my apartment got rid of most of the stuff that i own and put it in storage material possessions what do you need them for yes indeed and uh so i did that i've been you know i live out of my car i stay with friends you know when the weather's nice i just sleep in my car it's big enough for it and it's really comfortable what kind of car do you have uh, it's a honda element with no back seats awesome mattress back there that's fantastic it's it's amazing people are like you're living out of a car what do you just sleep in the front seat i'm like no i got a mattress i got a mattress i mean like it's still weird yeah but it's comfortable and you know and it and it works you can lay down you can at least stretch out all the way you know people are like what you got to like accordion yourself up i'm like no if i had to do that i wouldn't be doing this i don't want to be uncomfortable in my life i mean because everybody thinks um like when comedians go on tour it's like i mean i don't know some people do like do you think it's just this rock star living it's like no we're sleeping on floors couches whatever we can get in the back of cars just to make it work and what's funny is you know people are like oh why don't you just stay with people i'm like because my car's really comfortable like uh i'm more comfortable in the that car than i am on somebody's couch like i'll I'll be in places with friends and and i'm like here's the thing let me have a key let me use your bathroom yeah and then i'll be sleeping out of my car and they're like that's crazy i'm like go lay down in it go lay down in it fool you're gonna love it all right it's like sleeping in a cloud Have you ever slept on a cloud before? Yeah, huh? Because I have. Yeah. All right. And all Walmart the time. parking lots all across the Western United yeah, that's States. That's what you do, Walmart parking lot life? Yep. Living live the dream, baby. 24-hour bathroom, yeah. and they let you sleep there. Yeah. Like, it's it's designed for you to sleep in the parking lot. That's why part of why it exists. Because the, why the parking lots are so big and uh-huh. why that like the lights are always on and stuff? And why there's security guards. Like, the security guards will roll up and be like, hey, you have you sleeping here for the night? Good. Be safe. If you need anything, really? let me know. I've had that happen more than once. What is I mean, thing? I'll just be sitting... They like think the you'll back. just buy stuff there? You will buy stuff. Yeah. There. I mean, it's genius. I spend... When when I'm sleeping in Walmart parking lot, <laughs> I'm spending <laughs> at least $2 every day on something there. Yeah. Uh, be it the McDonald's that's in there or the Subway that's in there or jugged water or something. I mean, they're nickel and diamond it in the right way. Uh, and they're like, yep, two, three bucks a day that I wouldn't have gotten otherwise... 
for having this big parking I lot. mean, yeah, and you have that giant slab of concrete. It might be, it might as well be used for something. Exactly. And so, I mean, it works really well because people talk bad about Walmart. And I'm like, yo, Walmart is actively facilitating me traveling around the country. Number doing one comedy. supporter of your comedy uh, career. Them and Shasta. You know, nobody else is doing more for me right so now. So you're doing a lot of open mics and stuff like that. Yeah, kind of explain how that's going. Because, uh, you know, comedy is a weird game. There's no set way to move forward in it. And so um, yeah. to me, it's all about just doing something. And so yeah. what I'm currently doing is I travel to to as many places as I can. I go to all the cities that that I that I can think of that have comedy currently in the Western United States because that's just where I've been so far. Yeah. And I go and I just bomb their mics and I and I and I go to as many mics as I can in a given week and I don't actively solicit shows i don't book anything yeah um ahead of time i just go to the mics and you you know my act is is very unique it's yeah very drum machine i'm screaming i'm jumping around like a cricket and all that stuff yeah and so people remember it uh, and then what i do is when i come back through these cities which i try to do six months uh, or a year later yeah i just put out on facebook and i say hey these two or three or four people that i met in the city i'm coming back through um, do you have any shows for cool. me? And, yeah. and it's working. When That's I a good way to do it. When I went back through Houston uh, th- for the second time, I only did one mic and I did six book shows. Awesome. And so uh, it's just it's a slow process, but comedy anywhere you look slow. It's a oh, 10-year yeah. game. It is a definitely 10-year game. And Absolutely. And so you have to look and say, well, what can I do over What the, do I want out years? of this? Yeah, exactly. And so it's, it's just an anchor for me to travel around. I've seen a, a whole chunk of the country yeah. and done comedy in these cities, and it's just a lot of fun. And Yeah, I mean, definitely been able to you know not be working in those times, too, and just kind yes. of like exploring your brain, I'm sure. Well, and that's, you know, living in the car. People are like, isn't that rough? I'm like, oh, it would be great to stay in a hotel every yeah. night. It would also mean that these three-month trips that I do <laughs> would be two-week trips like a normal human being. I don't want to live like a normal human being. No. I would rather sacrifice all kinds of a amenities yeah. in exchange for these to pay for a roof time. and some terrible coffee and some terrible breakfast or yeah. something because i drink good coffee on the road starbucks their gold card gets you free refills what i do is i go in there and order a tall coffee and fill a 36 ounce thermos with refill after refill over like 20 minutes i'll walk up to the counter and i will ask <laughs> for 15 refills on this coffee and just they're like they can't say you? anything they can't say anything the refills are free do they, they just know keep... that you're drinking at all they don't why would they care even what does even it matter is it, it just drip coffee yeah it's only hot brewed or iced coffee and <laughs> iced so coffee like, once a week i pay two dollars for 40 ounces of starbucks coffee that i then carry around for three days just drinking <laughs> you know living life man life hacks you life know what hacks. i mean these institutions and these systems were created to be abused they, they were don't get me started on spotify ladies yeah. and gentlemen <laughs> <laughs> seriously don't uh, you don't want to talk about that? <laughs> has, the ca- has the court case been settled yet? Or? No, it's still up in the air. I <laughs> talked with my lawyers. <laughs> they <laughs> still really want that money back. Goodness gracious, do they want that cash back? That's not, not even the situation. They have a grip of cash that I want <laughs> yeah. from them. Yeah. Oh, that is right. <laughs> Different uh, situation. That's right. Um, so explain your writing process for the people out there. I know we talked about it. We touched on it just a, a second before. So in my phone, like most comedians, I have an open note section that's yeah. just funny ideas that have popped into my head and uh once a week, uh twice a week, however many mics I'm going to, whatever mm-hmm. I need to to work on, I'll open that up uh in the afternoon and I'll see what it says and uh start a drum beat going cool. and just try to figure out a song from that. All I'm looking for when I do that is just uh, a chorus. Yeah. Is, is what is the chorus? And, okay. you know, in part one, you heard me sing Red Flags. Yeah. When that song was written, all it was was the ideas for those verses and then get the drum beat going and figure out what the chorus sounds like. Okay. And so my songwriting process, because the chorus is almost always the punchline. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the first verse is usually the setup and the chorus is usually the punchline. And so I've got to find what that punchline is. Yeah. And then as I go to Mike's, I I work out what these verses uh-huh. are exactly. and to figure out how to to get into that chorus, figure out uh, the different cool. stuff like that. So it's that. a more writing on stage process. Uh, most of it, That's you know, cool. I'll have the general idea, but it, nothing is ever even once yeah. it's finished, written out to one hundred percent. I like that too because it definitely means that the act is ever changing and that you're always working on something regardless of what you're doing on stage. It is. I know. also like the element of being able to fail. Yeah, uh, when oh. something is memorized as a script. You can just 
say these words. And now I've got songs That's that have gotten point. to that point. Yeah. Where I've sang them so many times Going that, I, the I, that they're they're basically completed. There's so funny I'm going to make them. And that's ne- never as much fun for me. Now, no. I do enjoy, like, surprising the audience on cutters. You know, they don't see yeah. it coming. But I phone in that second verse. I know what the words are. I don't yeah. care. I just say the words. You got 30 minutes like up that. here. Uh-huh. I much prefer the earlier uh, versions of songs when yeah, I'm Yeah, because you're more it. excited to tell Always. Them. Speaking of what you do, you want to do another one for us? Uh, sure, I'll just uh, bang out a real... You know, this is a new song, so it's not <laughs> fully written yet. Cool. Uh, the chorus has some sort of place fillers in it. You'll nice. figure it out. Just uh, substitute any words that you want into this chorus. Uh, that chorus sounds like this. Something, something, dildo. Something, something, dildo. Something, something, dildo. I said wrecked him, damn near killed him. First verse. We do some room work here. We're here in Wayman's house. We got an artist wooden artist model here we have like 13 cardboard circles cut out he's got more colors of sharpie than you could possibly imagine would be in this house we got a lamp with a green shade there's a full zebra head in here wayman's wondering how far i'm gonna go with this we got a microphone box they're using a large steamer trunk for a coffee table and it works there's a carpet over a wooden floor we've got one complete bicycle one income two incomplete bicycles i see them over there plus some spare wheels and there's also a large screen that you could project a movie onto something something dildo something something dildo something something dildo i said wrecked him damn near killed him second verse tracy chapman here we go you got a fast car I got a ticket anywhere, maybe we can make a deal, maybe together we can get somewhere, any place is better, starting from zero, got nothing to lose, so maybe together we can get somewhere, any place is better, <laughs> something, something, dildo, something, something, dildo, something, something, dildo, I said wrecked him, damn near killed him, oh, <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yes. I've been listening to so much Tracy Chapman. Oh, you lately, have to. But I couldn't pull all the words out there. That's oh. so funny. Oh. I love that. That's great, too. Why not? Why not? Everybody needs a little more Chapman in their life. My, my fiance is one of the biggest Chapman heads I've ever met. So she's going to enjoy part yeah. two of Jay Gillespie <laughs> on Words <laughs> with Wayman. Wayman. You heard it here, everybody, <laughs> on KNOU 2893 oh. The Bees. <laughs> Don't uh, get stung. Yeah, I Embrace bitch. the bees. <laughs> I've been DJ Hot Ham and Cheese. This <laughs> and I, as always, <laughs> am Eggs Benedict. And we're coming at you from the brunch house. From the brunch house. And then I'm like we have a sound effect of a plate breaking, I'm sure. <laughs> Waffles. Waffles. Um, so we just got a couple minutes left. Let's. Uh, you said, we were talking about the business of comedy and what, uh, you know, what, what do you want out of this business, I guess is the question. You know, uh, my dream scenario mm. would be to make enough money that I didn't have to wait tables. Yeah, um, that's like, the goal. I, I don't even care. I don't care about being rich. I'm at a point in my life, and yeah. I don't mean that in some sort of like high and mighty way or no. whatever, where it's like, let me be a pauper. It'd be great to be rich. I would love to be rich. There's nothing that I want anymore. But is it uh, a necessity, I think? You yeah, know? I, I need very little. Like uh, All I would like to do is be able to just – create to make money i don't care i I write poetry if if somebody wants to pay me to do that that's great i'll do that all day every day no problem at all uh i love the comedy that'd be best case scenario definitely but uh if somebody wants to pay me to do that that'd be great i'll do it all day every day and be happy for like a hundred bucks a day yeah you know what i'm saying like it's really not going to take much and i think uh in this day and age, you're not going to get rich being an artist anymore. No, it's, unfortunately. It, it's not set up to be like that. Yeah. Uh, and that's fine. Or for the uh, very few. Uh, but even then, yeah. uh, you're, there are going to be sacrifices that you have to make at, at some point in order to make that money. Yeah. And I, and I think it's just going to be a reevaluation. And I don't think it's actually going to be good for the arts. Definitely. I think um, – Artists should should be making art because they have no choice. Of course, and, and anytime you put you dangle this carrot of of wealth in front of people, that's gonna pull other people into this sort of like uh, stream of it, yeah. and those people don't need to be there. Everybody's got some sort of calling or whatever, yeah. And you need to find it. You don't need to be looking to get rich. That is not a fucking calling. Oh no, uh, I think that that I would love for artist to be making less than a hundred thousand a year because people aren't going to do that necessarily yeah. 
without it being a passion. Of course. Because you look at some of us, we're creating art to the best of our ability. Art and is a lot in of quotation it. marks. Yeah, you can't of see that because it's Content, audio. I guess. Uh, but for zero dollars. And that's good. You know, yeah, it is we're good. creating it because we don't have a choice. Yeah. You know, we're not going to, to these open mics necessarily to get rich. Oh, God. So or for fame. <laughs> and, and everybody should be like that or whatever. No, I think that is definitely one of the uh, coolest ways that I've heard uh, that explained in a long time, and I agree with all all of that that you said. Because I mean, I've always talked about this from the beginning. This is um, since it isn't monetarily rewarded for so many years, it is something that you have to do or that you don't have to do. Yeah, you know? and it's it, like, it's it's optional. And we see people quit all the time. You just see people stop showing up for a year, and it's just like that's just what it is. And mm-hmm. b- if that was what you're talking about in the former, they were doing it for money. I think a lot of them probably were, and I think a lot of them just. Or f- or for goals that. that that they don't necessarily couldn't even put into words to try to get Money a girlfriend and then they get a girlfriend and then you yes. don't see him anymore. Mission accomplished. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying. I got what I wanted out of comedy, which for some people, to be completely honest, that is what it is. Sure, or a social scene, or yeah. you know, uh, free friends. W- yeah, or whatever it is, and not in uh, such an obvious way. But you're like, yeah, this is what I do, as opposed to some sort of like compulsion uh, yeah. to create in whatever form mm-hmm. where where you would do it. For zero dollars, of you course, know? and that's the thing too. It is such a material-driven thing as well. Like with that, it's that people don't realize how much work there goes on outside of comedy. That even like before the mic, you know, if you want to hit a mic, you want to have a couple new minutes. You got to write a little bit to get those new minutes. So it's, a, it's a big process that I feel like a lot of people don't realize. Um, and speaking of realization, I just realized that we are getting down to the end of the part two. Before we get out of here, do you want to give all of your uh, wherever we can find your stuff online? Yeah, uh, you know, just search Ultra Sex Laser. That's uh, at Ultra Sex Laser on Twitter. That's Ultra Sex Laser on Facebook. You'll find everything I'm doing. Um, I've also got my web series, Video Games, uh, with Roger Norquist, where we play old school video games and smoke a lot of Denver Relief Pot. You can find that on sexpotcomedy.com. And, uh, you know, Drink Shasta. That's a family owned and operated company. <laughs> uh, first company to do diet and sugar free soda. First company to do <laughs> soda in cans. If you appreciate soda in cans, you're going to want to drink Shasta. That's at Shasta Soda <laughs> on Twitter. They have over 200 Tweet followers. at them. They let you run the account every Monday. That's they they, they, <laughs> that they was, do, and it gets weird. That was know? in his grandfather's will. That was the only one of the, well, only things the best he left part. <laughs> <laughs> it's also an old Monopoly <laughs> game that was missing all the tokens. I was like, damn it, Grandpa. What did you even open to a They were in his belly. That's what the funeral was. All about. Connect four with all black pieces. I'm like, you can't even play it. It was a different time back then. You had know, R's <laughs> written on half of them. I'm like, Jesus, Grandpa, this game only costs seven dollars. <laughs> you don't get all that. You don't get all that soda money, but they've been spending it all. Well, I uh, thank you so much for coming out. You know, uh, I love you and love everything that you do. You got uh, so talented, and I wish you the best on the road. Um, and thank you so much for coming out again. Let me ask you one question before we go. Yeah. Does it dance? It dances, everybody. <laughs> Thank you all so much for listening out there, and we will see you all soon.